It's that time of year when many of you will start to think about your kids heading back to school, college or university. So while I'll happily let you worry about uniforms, accommodation and loans, trust me, I've been there. Where I thought I could step in was in helping you choose the right kit to see them through their studies this year. I'll assume you have their iPhone sorted, so I'm going to focus on whether you should choose an iPad or a MacBook Air for their studies. We'll look at specs, all the jargon means, and also prices. In other words, this will be a buyer's guide that will help you decide on what will work best for them. Much of their coursework will doubtless end up with them creating PDFs, and if they need to edit, annotate, or amend them, I found an awesome PDF editor, and I can't wait to tell you about that in a moment. Right, MacBook Air versus iPad, that old nugget. Let's begin to dig deep into where your money should land. And speaking about money, let's look first to prices of MacBook Airs. The first thing you need to know is there's an absolute bargain to be had with the MacBook Air right now. You can still buy a 13-inch M2 MacBook Air with 8 gigs of memory and 256 gigs of SSD storage for only £999, and that is a steal. Retina display, a fantastic backlit keyboard, decent I.O., a battery that will see them easily through a day at college, it is a real bargain. And if we're talking about bargains, don't forget to check out one of Apple's best kept secrets, their certified refurbished store. Looking on there a moment ago, I saw an M1 13-inch Air going for only £759. That's a saving of £240. Or, if you want like for like, then the same M2 Air, we looking at just a moment ago, well that's on sale as a refurbished Mac with all of Apple's normal warranties for only £849, a whopping saving of 150 quid. If you want the latest M3 MacBook Air, well they start at £1,099. My first word of caution would be about the memory. I've got the M3 iMac with only 8 gigs of memory and the moment I start to push it, you notice it. I guess it'll depend on the kind of coursework your kid is going to be doing, but my overall advice would be to avoid the 8 gig models where possible. The extra money spent up front on getting a 16 gig Mac will be worth it in the long run. I'd say the 16 gig of memory with 512 gigs of storage config would be the sweet spot on pretty much any Mac. Also, the moment you step up to 512 gigs of SSD storage, you'll get a 10 core GPU rather than a base 8 core. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I'm all about future proofing. As you know, you can't upgrade the memory after purchasing your Mac, but you can always, always buy external storage, and it isn't that expensive. This Samsung T7 1TB drive, for instance, has never let me down, and it's only cost £80. And for a whopping 2TB version of it, it's only £145. Put your money into memory. That would always be my advice. And if your kid is going to be gaming, and more and more people are gaming on Mac now since Apple Silicon was introduced, it's worth remembering that the M3 models, even the base ones, have hardware accelerated ray tracing. If your kid is going to be at uni or college and away from home for months at a time, it's also worth considering the M3 Airs have voice isolation and enhanced voice clarity, which will improve the quality of those FaceTime calls no end. The 1080p camera is identical across all MacBook Airs, though. All Airs have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, and the same I.O. of two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, which have transfer speeds of around 40 gigabits per second. You get MagSafe charging, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and Touch ID. If they own an Apple Watch, they'll also be able to unlock it with that as well. But there's still no Face ID yet on any Mac. Your guess is as good as mine as to when we'll finally get it and why it's not on them already. Now, the M2 MacBook Air supports one external display at up to 6K resolution at 60 hertz. Cutting through the marketing BS, the M3 is exactly the same. It's no different. You can use a second external display, but only if your Mac lid is closed in clamshell mode, so you're actually no better off. Although I struggle to get the 18 hours of battery life that Apple claims, I easily get 10 or 11 hours of straight use out of my MacBook Air in normal kind of day-to-day -day use, which should mean your kid won't have to bother taking the USB-C power adapter out with them. And trust me, I've been there, the less they have to lose, the better. So the perfect 13-inch MacBook Air with an 8-core CPU, 10-core GPU, a 16-core neural engine, and with Apple Intelligence coming soon, that could be even more important. It's got 16 gigs of memory, 512 gigs of storage. That's going to cost you £1,499. Now, one other point to consider is that the MacBook obviously runs Mac OS, and that means running a Microsoft Office suite of apps won't be an issue, but it often is on iPads. And that's an important point to remember, and I'll come back to that a little bit later on too. Finally, if portability is key, the MacBook Air lives up to its name. The 13-inch model weighs only 2.7 pounds or roughly 1,250 grams. And it's almost a given. That in their course, they're going to have to create PDFs to submit, which may often need editing at the last moment. And that's where the sponsor of this video come in, UPDF, to help save the day. Love more hate and PDFs are part of our everyday lives, and I've been looking for an easy to use PDF editor that didn't cost the earth for a while now. Other creators kept on telling me about UPDF and singing its praises, and now having used it, I can see why. It's such a powerful tool. It isn't simply another PDF editor, it's an AI beast as well. AI, of course, is currently changing the way we work, and UPDF has placed its front and center of this app. It offers features similar to Adobe Acrobat and Chat PDF, but at a lower price and 
with a simpler UI. I love this feature, for instance, where you can ask it to analyze long documents, and then you can ask it to summarize it, ask it for key points, or even ask it for highlights. It's brilliant and a game changer. It can even translate your PDF to all these languages. So sharing globally with colleagues just got a whole lot simpler and quicker. UPDF is the ultimate all-in-one PDF editor, letting you annotate, edit, convert, protect, fill, and sign PDFs across all platforms. Mac, iPad, iOS, Android, and even Windows, all with just one account. So whether you're a student, professional, or just someone who loves to stay organized, UPDF has got your back. You can redact sensitive parts of your PDF, or even entire pages, add editable fields, or use the form field recognition option, which will automatically highlight those fields for you. And look at this. You can even have UPDF read out loud the document, leaving you free to take notes. As you'd expect, there are state-of-the-art security encryption options, and you can even add watermarks and digital signatures to your PDF too. UPDF also features AI-powered optical character recognition, or OCR, for text recognition for scanned documents, images, and images within documents, turning them into easily editable and searchable files. You'll get cover on four devices across all platforms, and you'll get up to 110 gigs of cloud storage with your annual subscription as well. You can get UPDF Pro with an exclusive discount by clicking the link I've left you below, and you'll even get a seven-day free trial for UPDF's AI Assistant. UPDF has answered all my needs for PDF Editor, and I think you'll love it too. Thank you to UPDF for sponsoring this video. So now, let's turn our attention to iPad. I'm going to rule out the Mini, as there's no keyboard for it, and for that reason alone, it's not going to cut it, not long term. Also, I'm going to discount the base iPad, as I don't think that will prove productive enough either over time. Remember, we are trying to get it right the first time. That means the serious choices for a contender to the Mac are going to have to come down to being the iPad Air or iPad Pro. The iPad Pro is currently the only Apple device running M4 Apple Silicon with up to 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU. The M2 chip, on the other hand, only has an 8 core CPU and a 9 core GPU. Both use the same 16 core neural engine. The Pro can record in 4K ProRes, and both now have a 12 megapixel front facing camera, which is on the long edge, making it so much more comfortable for those FaceTime calls. And by the way, this this might be the first of my videos that you've seen. And if it is, it's lovely to have you along. Maybe YouTube put it as a suggested video for you. We sit down each week and just have a really calm conversation to do with Apple, everything to do with Apple. Take a look around the channel. If you like some of the other videos, if you're finding this video informative and interesting, all I'd ask is sub. It makes a massive difference. You come to the channel at a really interesting time. We're a few subs away from 10,000 subs. I've worked so hard for it, and you guys have been brilliant, brilliant in helping me grow recently. It's iPhone 16 season coming shortly. I'm going to be covering that, of course. I've got some really interesting videos planned for that. So making that sub, and don't forget, if you are subbing, turn on notifications as well, just so you know the moment that I upload the next video. And also, if you do like the way I kind of sit down and just chat, every Sunday, two o'clock British summertime, I send out a completely free video newsletter talking about the things that go on behind the scenes, behind the mic, that you can't really talk about on a main video. If that sounds like it could be interesting to you, leave me your details over on my website, talkingtechandaudio.com, and I'll send you my free weekly newsletter video every single week. Both the iPad Air and iPad Pro have USB-C ports, but the one on the iPad Pro is a Thunderbolt USB-C 4 port with much quicker transfer speeds. You get Face ID on the Pro, but only Touch ID on the Air. The speakers and mics are also much better on the iPad Pro. Both use Wi-Fi 6E and have 5G cellular options available. The Pro is slimmer and weighs less than the Air, oddly. The 11-inch iPad Pro only weighs 450 grams or just under a pound. The same size Air is a little over 460 grams and just a shade over a pound. But of course, these prices and weights I'm talking about are for the iPads only. To turn these iPads into a, a serious study machine, you'll almost certainly want to add a keyboard to them. And I can tell you from experience, those keyboards add a serious amount of weight. For my money, when it comes to battery life, the iPad has too many average days, whereas the MacBook Airs seem to be more consistent. Don't get me wrong, the iPad isn't bad, not at all, but I just seem to get better results from the MacBook Air day after day. Let's look at the 11-inch iPad Pro first. The Pro has a much better Ultra Retina XDR Tandem OLED display, and it comes with ProMotion and starts at £999, but only with 256 gigs of storage, which probably isn't going to be enough. If we upgrade that to 512 gigs, we're already at £1,199. The Apple Pencil, that costs £129, and the Magic Keyboard comes in at hefty £299. So this little lot will cost you £1,328. The 11-inch iPad Air, well, that starts at £599. And again, I'll upgrade it to a more realistic and usable 512 gigs of storage, adding on the Pencil Pro and Magic Keyboard, 
or in this config will set you back £1,028. Don't forget the Map Air with 16 gigs of memory and 512 gigs of storage, that costs £1,499. So in fairness, if I were to look at a 13-inch iPad Air and iPad Pro with the same configs we were just talking about, well, they would cost £1,228 and £1,628 respectively. One other very important consideration to come back to though is those issues with iPad and Microsoft Office, which many of you have commented on over the past few weeks on my iPad videos. Talk to your kid, find out how important those Microsoft Office apps are going to be to them. So which would I suggest you go with? Even though the iPad Pro is currently the only device on M4 Apple Silicon, and of course it's an all-in-one device you can shoot video on, edit, and upload, all of that to one side. I think for a student, because of Mac OS, and its compatibility with Microsoft Office, the winner has to be the 13-inch MacBook Air, and if you can afford it, the M3 MacBook Air. Combine that with the better speakers and mics and the solid battery life, the ray tracing and better I.O., I think the MacBook Air will see your kid through college, university or school better than an iPad. And in the long run, if you get the specs right, it will cost you less too. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you about to kick out your kid for the new academic year? And what do you think you'll buy, a MacBook Air or an iPad? And if it's an iPad, which one? An iPad Pro or an iPad Air? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget that sub if you found this video useful and informative. And I'll catch you back here again next week.